Hi, welcome to the first video in the drone software development series. In this series, I'm going to be showing you guys how to program autonomous drones, and I'm also going to be showing you guys some of the best software development practices for developing this code. In this video, I'm going to be giving you guys a brief system overview and going through all the different components that make up an autonomous drone. So, without further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to start by going over the flight board. The flight board has a hardware and a software aspect to it. The hardware aspect is the actual board which you can connect a bunch of different sensors to. Uh, it also has a couple different embedded sensors uh, which are accelerometers, an IMU, and uh, a compass. And this typically helps with the stability of the drone and keeping the drone level. Um, the software aspect is the autopilot software that you choose to run on it. Uh, for autonomous drones, there are two main um, flight stacks as of right now, and it's PX4 or Autopilot, and I'm going to be going over the differences between these two um, autopilots later in the video. The next thing you want to add to your drone is typically flight sensors, and these typically help you to um, get a different, uh, a better position estimate uh, for your drone. So typical sensors that you'll add are LiDAR for maybe an altitude estimate, uh, a GPS module for a better position estimate, or maybe even an optical flow sensor uh, for uh, even more precise uh, position estimate or to run without GPS. Um, the next piece of hardware that you add to your drone is a telemetry radio. And the telemetry radio allows you to communicate with a uh, laptop on the ground so that you can see the telemetry of the drone. And this laptop typically runs a piece of software called a ground control station and this will, sh uh, will display that telemetry nice and neat for you so that you can see what the drone is doing and make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to. Because if it's not, then you can go ahead and intervene. Um, the next piece of hardware that you typically add to your drone is the companion computer. And the companion computer really augments the computing capability of your flight board. Um, for example, one uh, really popular choice right now is the NVIDIA TX2. And this is really popular because it has an embedded GPU, which is really, really good for um, computer vision applications. Another aspect to the companion, companion computer is that it typically runs Linux, which means it's really easy to develop code. Um, and you also typically add uh, sensors that interface directly to the companion computer. And then the companion computer goes ahead and makes decisions, um, typically navigation decisions, and then tells the flight board uh, where to go. And then the flight board handles more of the low level control. So. The sensors that you interface with the companion computer are more mission specific. So typically these, these types of sensors are like 2D LiDARs, 3D LiDARs, cameras, IR sensors, um, stuff to help with the actual purpose of your autonomous drone. Now that I've given you guys a brief system overview, I'm going to be going over the two different options for your autopilot software. As I previously mentioned, uh, the two main uh, choices for your autopilot software are PX4 and Autopilot, and these two flight stacks are very, very similar. Um, the main differences being with the licensing. With PX4, you do not need to share your source code changes, but with uh, Autopilot, you do need to share uh, the changes that you make to your source code. Um, the next couple features are really, really subjective, um, but this is what I found from my experience. Um, what I found is that Autopilot focuses more on reliability uh, and less on experimental features. And I think that this is a direct um, result of Artipilot having a larger community base. And this larger community base uh, basically helps to surface bugs a lot faster. And it also um, uh, focuses on um, reliability just because these users do not want to see their drones crash because uh, they're not really focused on pushing the boundaries of what's possible with drones, but rather using them for applications such as videography. Whereas the PX4 guys seems to be a little bit more experimental and research oriented. Um, but I do think it gives them a big hindrance on the reliability of the flight stack overall. So my preferred flight stack is Artipilot, and that's what we're going to be using in the next few videos uh, to start programming our drones. So. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to install Artipilot and start developing um, your autonomous drone applications. See you in the next one.